Welcome back. So in this lecture, I'm really excited about telling you uh, about how reinforcement learning connects with optimal nonlinear control. This is just a splash screen. Don't try to read everything. I'm going to build this out and go through it carefully. Uh, I just wanted to kind of show you this is going to be a really cool one. Uh, and this fits in, again, to this bigger picture of reinforcement learning that we've been talking about, specifically um, down here in this kind of model-based reinforcement learning, where instead of a probabilistic process, we're dealing with a nonlinear dynamical system uh, or differential equation x dot equals f of x comma u. And we, you know, in the control boot camp, we talked a lot about how do you do optimal control for linear systems when these dynamics are given by a matrix A times X plus B times U. And this kind of generalizes it to fully nonlinear dynamics. Okay, and again, this fits into this idea um, that Richard Bellman put forward in the 50s. Uh, basically, you can view this optimal nonlinear control problem as part of a broader class of optimization where you can use ideas from dynamic programming. And this is Bellman's equation that we've seen before in reinforcement learning. We're going to see something like that for these differential equations. So optimal nonlinear control. Uh, the idea is that we're going to be working with this differential equation. So x is the state of my system. It's a vector of, of uh, information that characterizes the state of my system, like a pendulum on a cart, for example, the position of the cart, and theta and theta dot, the angle and angular velocity of the pendulum. And f describes the kind of dynamics, the f equals ma dynamics of that system. And the goal is going to be to design some control law u. So u is something we have control over. We're going to design a control law u to follow some trajectory x of t that minimizes a cost j. And that cost j is going to be given by this cost function. Uh, and I'll walk you through this. So this j is a function of the trajectory x, which varies in time, the control u, which varies in time. We say that this has a start time and an end time, t0 and t final. Uh, and on the right-hand side, this cost function is given by some kind of a terminal cost. And you, we usually include this to say, you know, maybe I'm trying to get to some final location. And if I don't quite get there, there's some cost associated with that. So I want to get to some final location. And maybe I also can penalize how long it takes me. Maybe I have a term that is, you know, a cost proportional to, to the final time tf, something like that. And then this term here is the amount uh, that, that you increase the cost at every little time step along the way. So you're going from state uh, x at time 0 to x at time tf. And at each step along the way, there is some cost associated uh, with typically with being far away from your state. So usually my goal minus x at time now. Uh, and also, there is usually a cost associated with using that control input U. Maybe that you're actually burning gasoline and it costs money. Okay? And again, this could simplify in the case of linear dynamics and a linear quadratic regulator cost function. This might be just uh, x transpose times x, so kind of x squared plus U squared. We might just measure kind of the uh, the square sum of errors of x minus its goal state and of the control input u, in which case this would reduce to a linear quadratic regulator problem if the dynamics were linear. Uh, and so what we can do is essentially introduce this value function, just like in reinforcement learning before. This value function is essentially the cost j when we have minimized over the control input u. So basically, out of all of the possible control functions u of t you could, you could pick, uh, which is an infinite dimensional function space uh, of, of functions u, if we minimized over all of those controllers, then the minimum possible cost, the best possible thing we could do uh, to get this minimal cost, that would be defined uh, by this value function. And it no longer is a function of, of u because u is specified. It's also not a function of x of t because that is also specified by u and by the dynamics. It's only a function of my initial condition and my start and end time. And this value function is sometimes called the cost to go, and I'll come back to that in a minute. 
And so what uh, what Bellman did, and this is a big deal. So so Bellman essentially generalized the Hamilton-Jacobi equation for optimization. If we didn't have u of t here, if we just had a free system, and we were trying to, for example, find the minimum time solution of a differential equation, or um, uh, the minimum distance solution or things like that, um, then the Hamilton-Jacobi equations would be useful. Those actually generalize uh, some ideas that Bernoulli came up with from the variation, uh, the calculus of variations to solve things like the Brachistochron Bra problem, um, the you know finite time problem or minimum time problem. And what uh, Bellman did was essentially write down this partial differential equation that has to be true for these optimal solutions uh, given by this optimal u. And we're going to derive this. This is a little bit hairy, uh, so if this doesn't look obvious, it's not. Uh, and we call this the Hamilton-Jacobi-Bellman equation. So the Hamilton-Jacobi equation you know, was around for a couple of hundred years, maybe 100, 150 years earlier. Um, and again, generalized uh, Bernoulli's calculus of variations. And Bellman came along and basically extended it to include systems with control inputs U of T. Okay, so this is a big deal. This is one of the, the biggest, most important equations in uh, nonlinear control theory is this Hamilton-Jacobi-Bellman equation. And so just to recap, the idea is that this value function is the cost given that we have optimized to find the best possible control input u of t. And the best u of t sometimes is a function of x. Um, you might, you know, in a linear quadratic regulator, it would be a function of x uh, defined that way. So we're going to actually derive this and show where this comes from and, uh, and also talk about how this partial differential equation is, is what you actually need to solve uh, for, for finding that, that optimization, that, that optimal control u. Because this has to be true for the optimal uh, minimum solution u, you can use this to actually solve for u. Good, and this all relies on, on Bellman's prim principle of optimality. So this has been something we looked at before in reinforcement learning, and we're gonna look at it um, again for, for this problem. So the idea here is that the value function, this, this cost to go from time zero to time tf, can be written as the sum of the value function on any two segments that make up that trajectory. So if I pick some intermediate point along this trajectory x of t at any intermediate time t, then I can add up the, the value function from t0 to t and the value function from t to tf, and that uh, sum is given is the value function across this entire trajectory. And what that means is that at any point t along this trajectory, the remainder of my trajectory still has to be optimal if I imagine that my problem just started over with this new initial condition x of t. At any point along this trajectory, it still has to be optimal as if I started from that initial condition. Every decision I make in the future still has to be optimal. And so that's a really important uh, idea. This Bellman optimality means that we can break this problem up and essentially solve uh, this optimization using kind of smaller optimization problems, exactly like what we did in dynamic programming for uh, reinforcement learning before. Okay, really important. So we're going to use this to derive the HJB equation. And uh, again, what we're going to do is take this value function and essentially expand it out. Uh, we're going to take the total derivative in time, and we're going to expand that out. So that's the partial of v with respect to time plus the derivative of v with respect to the state x times uh, dx dt. So this is how you do that kind of total derivative. And we'll notice that uh, dx dt is going to be our dynamics, uh, x dot equals f of x comma u. Okay, and so um, this expression here, essentially what we're going to do is um, this expression on the left is just ddt of my definition of v. And so this is my definition of v here, where what I've done is I've put the ddt inside the minimization. Because I'm minimizing over, over u of t, uh, I can kind of swap those two, those two terms. And so if I take ddt of this integral, I should just recover, uh, I should just recover my, my integral, um, what, whatever's inside the integral, because this is a, a definite integral from zero to tf. Um, this uh, terminal cost kind of uh, is fixed. And so what we're going to get is, uh, is minus the argument L um, of xt ut, 
Okay, so that's that's what this is going to equal when we take its derivative, and uh, and then we're going to minimize that over uh, all u's. And so essentially, what I can do is I can take this expression here and this expression here, and I can equate the pieces. So I'm going to move things around and get a minus uh, partial of v partial t equals um, kind of all of, of this stuff here. That's this uh, minimum u uh, l plus this partial v partial x transpose times x dot, which is this term here. Okay, and I can you know this term here because x dot equals f of x comma u, I can put that inside of this minimization over u. So I have to put this inside the min of u because now um, I've replaced my x dot with f of x comma u. So that was a little fast. You should really kind of carefully convince yourself that this is true. And in fact, there's actually you know, a couple of pieces I glossed over a little bit. This is not the most precise way of deriving this possible. Uh, the best way to do this is using the calculus of variations. This is kind of a sketch of why this works. Um, and you know, I think that this step from here to here, you'll really want to convince yourself of why I could drop these bounds of integration, uh, and when I take the derivative with respect to time, uh, why, th why this works out the way it does, okay? Good, and so that is kind of how you derive this, this Hamilton-Jacobi-Bellman equation. Now, the idea is that this is a partial differential equation. It's a partial differential equation because V uh, is a function of T and of X, and so you can take its partial derivatives. So this is a big partial differential equation. And we generally can solve this partial differential equation uh, for v. And then once we have v, we can extract u from it. Okay? And uh, to some extent, the way we generally do this is using a two-point, uh, this is a two-point boundary value problem because we know uh, what our final state is where we want to be. And so we can kind of, and we know where our initial condition is. And so you can use like shooting methods or other approaches to solve this, this two-point boundary value problem. Good. Uh, okay, so that was the continuous time HJB. I'll show you just briefly how to do the discrete time HJB when you have discrete time dynamics. Uh, and in this case, you can similarly write the cost function as the sum of a bunch of intermediate costs at each step plus some final cost at the nth or last uh, time step. So here we have discrete time steps. And again, this cost function is defined starting with an initial condition, a control sequence, and however many steps n I'm going to take. And so similarly, you can define this value function where it is the best possible cost j I could possibly have if I optimized over that control sequence u. Uh, and again, the Bellman optimality, the kind of discrete HJP equation or, or Bellman equation here states that again, the n step value function, the value function starting from an initial condition taking n steps is the same as the sum of the value function for any two segments that kind of add up to that full trajectory. So if I start, you know, if I go from, from time step zero to step k, that's uh, this term here, that uh, if I started from xk, it should still be optimal in the future. Meaning if I started from xk and I went you know, to that final n step, it should still be optimal uh, going into the future. Good, and I think here this, this probably should be an n minus k. And that can also be useful uh, for these equations. So then you can actually um, solve for, sorry, I think that was a statement of Bellman optimality. Um, I think this is a typo. I think that I should say that this is a statement of Bellman's optimality condition. And this is uh, going to be the, um, the discrete HJB equation right here. So again, you can uh, kind of represent this uh, as the minimum over all of the control sequences of those intermediate costs uh, at the current step uh, xk plus the value function at the next step. Because of the Bellman optimality, essentially what I have to do is I only have to optimize my cost at the current uh, kth time step. I only have to, to optimize my control right now so that if I step to the next step through these dynamics, if I go to xk plus one, um, you know, this uh, vk plus one is, um, is also minimized. So let me say this again. What I'm trying to do, and my, my parentheses are completely botched here, I apologize. The parentheses should be, uh, the minimum of u should be outside of these parentheses. So what I'm doing is I'm picking the best u at the kth time step right now 
so that the current cost plus my future value function at the next time step is minimized. And again, this is a statement of Bellman's optimality that I can break this up into a rec recursion where the value function at the step now can be written in terms of the cost now plus the value function at the next time step. And this allows me to do this kind of recursive or iterative optimization uh, to solve for this. And again, there, there's a lot of numerical methods. This is a huge field. I'm showing you how these are derived and what they are. There's a huge field uh, actually showing how to solve these. And they're, they're very expensive. I should point out, um, this is important. When I derived the HJB here for continuous time systems, I said that this is a partial differential equation. And what that means, if my original dynamics, x dot equals f of x comma u, if my original system had three discrete states, x1, x2, x3, this is a three-dimensional partial differential equation. That's very expensive to solve. If I have a 10-dimensional state, I have a 10-dimensional PDE. If I have a 1,000-dimensional state, I have a 1,000-dimensional PDE. And we're, you know, it's pretty expensive to solve a 1,000-dimensional PDE. So these are really expensive to solve. You actually can find an optimal nonlinear control solution, but it requires solving this kind of heinous PDE in high dimensions. And that's really, really challenging numerically. Okay, so that's important. Uh, similarly, you can do this uh, for HJB, and this is a better way of writing it recursively where I actually was uh, correct and pulled the minimization out. Uh, this is again for discrete HJB. And the idea, again, is that once you have this expression here, this uh, kind of Bellman optimality expression, this starts to look a lot like uh, what we had from reinforcement learning. So if you minimize this expression over u, you get the, um, the value function at that point. And if you do the argument, if you find the u that minimizes this, you have extracted a control policy. This would be the optimal control u equals pi of x. Okay, that was kind of a whirlwind, a little bit uh, high level, but what I want to show, what I hope to show you is that these ideas from dynamic programming and reinforcement learning also connect very strongly with optimal nonlinear control, which is kind of a generalization of what I've shown you before in the control boot camp for linear systems like LQR uh, controllers. Okay, good. Uh, so that's this piece here. And I'll probably have more lectures on kind of nonlinear optimal control, maybe more from a, a nonlinear control perspective and less from a reinforcement learning dynamic programming perspective. But I hope that gives you kind of a flavor of how these things fit together. All right, thank you.